Hey guys, Proper English here. Today I'm going to teach you about D flip flops. The D stands for data, so as you might expect, these are used to store data. We're going to start by taking a look at this design over here. It's a torch based design, and we're going to use this to learn how they work. Then we're going to come over here and take a look at this fantastic piston based D flip flop. I use it all the time, and if you're going to use a D flip flop, this is a good choice. So, let's get started. So let's take a look at this and how it works. At the core of every D flip-flop is an SR latch. You might know it as an RS NOR latch. We've got a set, a reset, and an output. We also have two inputs over here. We've got a data input and a clock input. Now the data input is what we're saving. The clock is the save function, okay? So right now we've got a zero save to the D flip-flop. The output's a zero. We can turn the data input on, it's not going to affect the output because the zero is saved. But if I clock it, now the output's on because we just saved a one to the D flip flop. We can come over, we can turn this lever off while well, it didn't affect the output because the one is saved. But if I clock it again, there you go, the output is now off. Okay, because we saved a zero to the D flip flop. Now let's take a look at how this works. So the thing we're going to look at is how the clock input affects the data input, okay? So the clock right now, well, this, uh, this torch over here is holding this torch off, okay? So this torch is connected to the data input. And right now, if we didn't have this wire up here, this could come on. So we're holding that off. And now if I clock it, well, the torch can come on. And let's try turning the data input to a one, we'll clock it again. Now the torch is held off, okay? And so this feeds right into the reset, okay? And the reset is what sets the SR latch to zero. So if the data input is zero and I clock it, well, we get an input to the reset and we set this to zero. But now what if we wanna set it to one? Well, when I turn this on and I clock it, this torch can't come on. But the other thing that the clock does is the clock hits the set input, okay? So every time we clock it, we're setting it. And then based on the state of the data input, we either reset it or we don't reset it. Right now, we would not be resetting it, okay? And so let's, let's actually set it to zero first. And now we'll turn this on and we can watch what happens. Well, we're gonna clock it. And so you can see that we set it, but because this torch got held off by this signal over here, it got set to one. And so now let's set this to zero. Okay, so our data input zero, we can clock it. And now because this torch could come on, it reset the SR latch and gives us an output of zero. It saves the zero to the SR latch. And there you go. Now you know how a D flip flop works. So let's take a look at this piston based D flip flop over here. This thing is really cool. All right, so right now uh, you can see we've got a clock input over here. And this is our data input here. So the, uh, the data input is zero. If I clock it, nothing's gonna happen. I mean, I can change this right now without clocking it. It doesn't change the state of the memory cell. But if I turn this to a one and I clock it, we saved the one to this memory cell over here, all right? And now I can change this off and it doesn't do anything over here until I clock it again. And we call this a basil flop after the, uh, the guy who invented it. And, uh, and yeah, this thing is awesome. I use it all the time and I love it. If you're gonna use a D flip flop, like I said, this is a great one to use. And yeah, so now you know how to build a memory cell called a D flip-flop, it's actually very useful and it's the core component in a RAM cell and I will teach you that next time. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you guys next time.